so much data, but where to put it all? SSD, HDD, NAS, or M.2 SSD, but I make the enclosure? If all that sounds a bit like alphabet soup to you, you're in the right place. Let's break it down. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, welcome to DIY in 5. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and today we'll be going over the various external storage options, aka portable ways to store your data that live outside your actual computer, and how to know which is right for you. If you find the tips in today's video useful, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit that bell so that you don't miss out on any future tech tips. First up, let's take a look at external HDD hard drives, the tried and true. HDD or hard disk drives are generally more affordable, larger, and a bit weightier than other storage solutions out there. They have mechanical moving parts and thus are a bit more prone to damage from a drop or a fall and generally have slower transfer speeds than you'll find with other types of drives. If you're looking for high capacity storage at a decent price with files that maybe you want to archive and aren't as concerned with transfer speeds, and you plan to keep the drive in mostly one location, this could be the best solution for you. Next up, SSD or solid state drive storage offers faster transfer speeds than traditional HDD drives. So this is great if you need to access the data on the drive often or quickly. Solid state drives have no moving parts, so they're generally more durable and smaller in size, making them a more portable storage solution as well. And portable SSDs, like their HDD counterparts, are mostly plug and play, meaning you can simply plug them into your computer via a USB connector and transfer files over immediately. In fact, if you're looking for a small, portable, plug and play, fast and rugged drive, a new Challenger has entered the ring in the Kingston XS2000. I mean, look at how tiny it is. One of the coolest things about this drive is that it uses USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 connection standard, allowing for even faster data transfer speeds than other external SSD drives. We'll get more into how USB connections impact your external drive a bit later, but trust me, she's fast. The one drawback to SSD storage used to be that it was significantly more expensive since you're paying for a newer type of storage technology. But like most new technology, as it becomes more universally used, that price comes down a bit. So now you can find SSD storage options at a much more affordable price point than ever before. Now, if you want super fast SSD speeds and you're willing to put in a little DIY elbow grease, you can usually save yourself some cash by purchasing a traditional SSD and putting it inside an external enclosure, thereby turning an internal SSD into an external SSD. Now, if you wanna see a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that, check out the videos linked up here. Some drives, like many of the Kingston 2.5 inch drives, include an external enclosure already, and others you may have to purchase separately. Both Pluggable and Elec Gear make some really solid NVMe M.2 enclosures. NVMe drives can offer ultra fast read and write speeds, but it's important to remember that your speeds are only as good as your slowest component. And when it comes to external drives, Often, that's your USB connection that may slow you down. For example, if your drive is capable of three gigabytes per second read and write speeds, but your connecting cable is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB capable of up to 10 gigabits a second bandwidth, you won't be actually getting those full speeds. Important to note here, a bit is one eighth of a byte. So whether giga or mega, be sure not to mix these up as you may be expecting something eight times faster than what you've got. Uppercase G with lowercase b is gigabit. Finally, there's one more storage solution for those out there who have oodles and oodles of data to store anywhere from four terabytes on up. NAS or network area storage is a high capacity storage option that can connect to a network, allowing multiple people to access the data stored there. NAS solutions can be a bit more expensive to maintain as you need an enclosure that will then house your various drives within manage the drive array, network, and file server, the NAS enclosure basically acts as its own mini computer. 
Now you can get NAS enclosures in anywhere from two to eight bay options or even larger for server type solutions. Then you purchase large capacity NAS drives to go in each of those bays, depending on how much capacity you'll need. This option is great for multiple computers having the ability to access the same files and is often thought of as a more affordable option to cloud storage when it comes to maintenance over time. The great thing about the types of external storage I've listed in this video is that you've got loads of options at all levels. So you can scale the capacity, drive portability, and size and transfer speeds to your budget and your specific needs. If you have any further questions not answered in this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And the Kingston team and I will do our best to answer them. But mainly, I hope this video gave you a solid overview of the various types of external storage options out there and helped you on your way to finding the best solution for your needs. Take care everyone, and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.